Hello YouTube. Today in the Naughty Librarian, I'm doing my end of Smutty September wrap up. I have eight books to go over today, so that's a fair amount of books. Uh, I will admit to DNFing two of them, so really it's more like six books I'm reviewing. <laughs> but uh, it's been pretty fruitful this second half of the month. Uh, I did go fairly rogue from my TBR list. I just started reading whatever I wanted because I DNF two of them and I was like, whatever, here we go, read whatever I want. <laughs> But anyway, let's just review some books. This is what I read the second half of Smutty September. I'm pretty excited about it. There's some Smutty Delights, there's some Fantasy Delights, there's all kinds of good stuff. Let's go. First category is Fantasy Romance and I read two of them. I loved A Promise of Fire by Amanda Boucher so much that I went right into book two, Breath of Fire by Amanda Boucher, and um, no regrets. I really just wanted to read another book of this series because I had so much fun with the first book. So uh, yeah, went rogue for my TBR, but not sorry about it. <laughs> this uh, starts up exactly where we left off in book one. It starts literally right back where we left off. And uh, I don't know, in the end I gave it four stars, a little bit less than the other book, just because uh, I felt there was some pacing issues in this one. I felt like just too breakneck all the time. There's too many quests going on and not enough, uh, I don't know, not enough development and world building that I really, really enjoyed in the first one. This one just felt like too much action, I would say. But it's not necessarily a bad thing, because is it super fun? Is it super steamy? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, what are you gonna do? Another reason I took off a star is just because it was a little bit predictable. Like, honestly, I was calling things that were gonna happen, like, 25% of the way through the book. <laughs> like, and I was correct. So it was pretty predictable. A little off-paced. It was just too fast-paced. And, yeah, so it had some issues just with flow, but content-wise, it's super fun! It's the Greek gods and uh, this woman named Kat. She is kind of like, all the gods like really like this lady. They just like her and like she's supposed to like do this prophecy stuff and Griffin is her, her main squeeze and he's a warlord and then they're they're doing stuff together. And it got, and, and the romance gets a little heavy-handed at times. It's like, I'll die without you. And it, it, it's just intense all the time. Like, they're always at 11. And, like, sometimes you could be, at like, at a 6, you know? <laughs> That's how relationships are. You're not always at 11. Sometimes you're at 6, and it's cool. So, I don't know. It was just, like, that, that pitch thing, you know what I mean? It was just too fast-paced and too intense. It needed, like, chill out at moments. And I think it would have been a little bit better. It needed better flow. But... Overall, it's still super fun. Lots of action, adventure, Greek gods, smutty delights, and it's just fun. It's a fun book. It's not as good as book one, but I think it does a lot of work setting up book three, which I'm super excited about, the big finale. I'm definitely going to be reading that, so yeah, do I recommend? Yes, this is a really fun series. I had like genuinely really a lot of fun reading it. I went rogue off my TBR again with Emerald Blaze by Alona Andrews. I picked this one up because I had just decided to DNF a book and I was like, you know what, I just want to read something I know I'm for sure going to like. So I grabbed this one and you know what, I was correct. I fully enjoyed this. I loved it to bits. This is like the big second story arc in the Hidden Legacy series. The first one was about Nevada Baylor. This is about her sister Catalina Baylor. She's like the lead heroine in it. And oh my gosh, I freaking adore Catalina. She is like one of my all-time favorite heroines and like people were not so on board with Catalina because there's a lot of Nevada fans but uh yeah Catalina ooh, like she is like so dark sometimes and like moody and like I like it. <laughs> she's playing a long game and I, I think she's probably the most dangerous Baylor sibling and just in how she thinks things out because she's playing like five steps ahead of everyone else. She's playing the long game and she's probably gonna win. I freaking love Catalina Baylor. She's my favorite. She's my favorite. I didn't know she was gonna be my favorite and now she is. But this is a uh, kind of continuing on somewhat of a plot line throughout the, that's gonna be going on throughout this whole series, but it's kind of, you know, monster of the week as well, where you have Catalina and you know, her, Star-crossed love interest, Alessandro Segredo. <laughs> you know, the, 
the most Italian man who's ever been Italian in his life. <laughs> They're together again. You really root for this couple to get together. They always have so many like obstacles and like, you just want to see them get together. And I'm sorry, slight of spoilers, they kind of do get together. And you're just like, yeah, you guys get together. Damn it, you do that. <laughs> so I was very satisfied by the conclusion of this book. And you know, it has all of the fun Alona Andrews urban fantasy charm. It is taking place in this world where there's magical dynasties. So it's like House Baylor has this type of magic and House whatever has that type of magic. And they still live in the real world. It takes place in Houston, Texas, which is a real place. <laughs> so it's kind of this weird hyper reality where you also have like normal people and the normal law enforcement that happens to normal people. And then you also have wizards and like house warfare and how like normal people can't interfere because this is like literal, literal wizard battles and there's nothing they can do to stop it. It's a weird reality that this book takes place in, but it's really, really good. This is a monster of the week type of story, so it's kind of episodic, but uh, whew, this one is a kind of a gnarly villain. I will say that I guess the bad guy immediately, but that's just me. I'm really good at guessing bad guys. <laughs> I'm really good at picking the killer in like thrillers. That's why thrillers aren't as ever fun for me because I know the killer immediately, like all the time. So uh, yeah, I picked the killer immediately, but and that didn't like hinder me enjoying the book. It was still like well-crafted, and interesting, I, I think they, they threw out the killer in advance and made it easy to guess because even they figure out the killer pretty early on in the book and then they just have to find proof. You know what I mean? So maybe it was on purpose. I don't know, but I really had a lot of fun with it. I gave it like five stars. It's just awesome urban fantasy. There's steamy delights, there's action, there's wizard battles, there's like a monster. It's, it's got a lot of really cool stuff going on and it's great. Highly recommend. Next category is historical romance, and I read two of those. I read Love is Blind by Lindsay Sands. This was kindly sent to me by one of my friends and subscribers, Jessica, and we buddy read it together. And you know what? <laughs> I gave it like, like three and a half stars. I think that's a fair amount of stars to give it. it it's, it's silly. Like, frankly, I feel like the heroine in this Clarissa, she is like basically if a Disney princess was in a smutty bodice ripper. She's literally that. Like at any moment, I think she's gonna go into the woods and make friends with all of the woodland creatures and burst into song. Like that's who she is as a human. <laughs> it's like, it just warps your mind because you're just like, where, is this a musical? Is everyone gonna bust out into song at any moment? Like that's how you feel while reading it but it's also a smutty bodice ripper. So you're just like, I am confused about what universe this is. <laughs> While it does have all of the aspects of like normal, uh, I guess Regency era, historical romance, bodice ripper, that kind of stuff. It has all those tropes going on. It's also like cutesy and, and just, these characters are just simple bitches. Like, <laughs> the whole time I was reading it, I'm like, how did you get this far in life? You're a duke and a businessman and you are a simpleton. <laughs> like, oh my goodness gracious. Like these characters are just simple, <laughs> simple minded. <laughs> I don't know. It's a, that's the big key here. It feels like if a Disney movie was a bodice ripper, it's the best way to describe it. Uh, what's that movie? Enchanted. That as a bodice ripper, except actually in the Regency era, that kind of humor and tone and like quirkiness but with smut. <laughs> is that warping your brain or is it just me? Because I feel like everyone's brain should be sufficiently warped at this point. Yeah, so that that's about it. I don't know. It's about this woman, Clarissa, and uh, this guy, Adrian, uh, what's his name? Oh, okay. So he's an Earl. I said he was a Duke earlier. Excuse me. He's an Earl. This is Adrian, the Earl of Mowbray. And uh, he apparently, he's like, I have a scar, I'm ugly. And Clarissa is blind as a bat. <laughs> her, her step, she has an evil stepmother, very Disney, who won't let her wear her glasses. And so she's just literally like stumbling through life, can't, can't see anything, putting her, her teacups on people's laps because she thinks they're tables. And she's just a hot mess. And he's just like, you can't see my face? Nice. <laughs> so they kind of have this romance that's like genuinely a little bit cute 
It is uh, a typical Lindsay Sands book. There is, of course, a murder mystery going on here. Not a very successful one, I will say, because again, uh, Clarissa is this a Disney princess come to bodice ripper life. And it, it's just settled so quickly and so awkwardly that you're just like, what? You know, at the end of the day, it is kind of fun. I don't know, at three and a half stars. It was fun to read, but quite simple and kind of like messed with my head because I swear at like, any minute these characters are gonna bust out into song. It was one of those stories. You'll just have to read it and see how you feel. But like, yeah, it's fun, but it's weird. <laughs> it's the best way to describe it. I also read A Rogue of One's Own by Evie Dunmore. Again, went rogue for my TBR list. And you know what? I'm gonna talk through this because honestly, I, I don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> because when I finished the book, did I enjoy it? Yeah, and I think I gave it like 3.75 stars. Like, I gave it like a fairly good reading rating here. And, but the other side of the coin is, do I like it? I'm not sure. This is like a book I dislike so much that I kind of like it. I've, it's what I don't, I don't know how I feel. I'm very confused. Uh, like a lot of the times while I was reading the book, I was rewriting it in my own head and thinking up better scenes that were on the page. <laughs> There's so many like weird banter moments that I was like, you should have thrown that joke in there. That would have made it pop. Or you should have done this and this and that would have made it better. So I literally was just rewriting the book as I was reading it. So maybe I just liked the version that I wrote in my brain while reading it because I was adding characters. Like I was just making up my own, my own story. This is a choose your own adventure for me and not really in real life. <laughs> it's weird because I kind of had the same vibe with the predecessor to this one, Bringing Down the Duke, where it's literally made out of tropes I don't normally like, but I still liked it. And this one is the kind of the same story. It's like made out of stuff I don't like, but when I finished reading it, I was like, oh, I, like, I kind of liked it. I don't know why. <laughs> this is a um, enemies to lovers, childhood friends to lovers, crossover story. Uh, you have Lucy and Tristan. Lucy is a full force suffragette and Tristan is a kind of a, a devil may care of uh, Duke. I forget what like social standing he is, but I'm just assuming everyone's a Duke because that's just how it is in these books. <laughs> but, um, he's some type of aristocracy member of the town, Tristan, who is very devil may care kind of a, a libertine, so to speak, and uh, he's basically just kind of been in love with Lucy his entire life. He's, uh, you know what, I'm just gonna, okay. <laughs> I don't know if I should say this or not, but I'm going to. I feel like Tristan is sexually submissive to a point where like Lucy being so forceful and powerful is like, his kink. <laughs> I don't know. He, like he doesn't come off as submissive, but I was just like, no, he's a bottom. Like <laughs> Lu Lucy's like taking the reins of this relationship. I don't know. That's just kind of their sexual dynamic. I think he really. I think he really enjoys that she's so forceful and like strong and like opinionated, which is you no know, not good characteristics for women in the Victorian era. But I think that's like his thing. He just like, oh, I like that. Like, I think he would want to, yeah, he, he's, he's a bit submissive, I would say. Sorry, that's not in the book. I'm just rewriting kinks into it. I can't stop rewriting the book. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know if I like this or not, or do I just like the fact that I rewrite it in cool ways that are fun for me? So I, I don't really know how I feel about this. <laughs> It's like one of those books I can't review because I just keep rewriting it in my own head. But, um, I don't know. I think I liked it. Next category is fantasy, and I read two of them. Yet again, going rogue for my TBR list, I read As the Shadow Rises by Katie Rose Poole, mainly because I waited an entire year to read this book, and I couldn't wait anymore. <laughs> I just, I had to do it. I had to do it now. You know what? I freaking loved it. Uh, do I think the pacing and like the story building was better in its predecessor, uh, There Will Come a Darkness? Yeah, I think the book one might be a little bit better, but this is a middle book of a trilogy and that's a fairly common critique of middle books that 
they're not adding a lot to the story yet. They're just kind of bridging the beginning and the ending. So it does have a little bit of that, but there's a lot of really cool stuff going on in here. And uh, I, I can't really get into the whole story because there's five different perspectives and it's like goes across many different countries in this fantasy world and there's magic and shit. There's a lot of stuff going on here, but like genuinely it's one of my favorite book series that have come out in recent years. I highly recommend. If you haven't read There Will Come a Darkness, the book one of this series, please read it. It's amazing. And the sequel, As the Shadow Rises, also really good. The basic gist of this series is that uh, there's this world that had prophets in it and um, they shared graces with people and graces are like magical abilities. So there's people who are graced. And then there's a bunch of people who, who hate grace people and they're trying to literally burn their magic out of them with fire. So it's kind of a violent world we're in. <laughs> And there's also civil war and like uh, persecution and like a big ass prophecy, the final prophecy that was left by these prophets about how the world is gonna end. There's a lot of shit going on in here. But uh, yeah, that, that's, a, that's the basic gist. I told you nothing about what's happening, but that's kind of the idea here. The best way to describe the plot of this book is, uh, well shit. That's how you feel when you end it. You're like, well shit. Uh, a lot just happened. <laughs> That's what you can say, because, like, the Calamity just follows these characters right and left, so it's just like, oh, Calamity, well, shit. There's, there you go. Calamity number two, well, shit. So that's just kind of like the overall mantra of the book is, well, shit, because there's a lot of Calamity going on, and it's quite the ending. But however, I'm going to point this out, because in a lot of middle books, when they're like, ooh, it's gonna, the finale is going to be really good, and they give you this huge effing cliffhanger in book two, and you and you curse the author's name for making you wait a year. <laughs> this one does have a bit of a cliffhangery ending, but it still feels resolved enough. Like this part of the story is complete. So I don't feel like waiting the year for the next book. I don't have to curse this author's name, essentially. This feels complete. Uh, which is good. I mean, it is a cliffhanger. There, there's a lot of open threads here, but like it feels like a complete story in itself. Do I recommend this? Yes, I gave it, I think I gave it five stars. I don't remember. It was either that or like 4.75 because there was some like clumsiness in certain aspects of the book. But then again, like I mentioned, it's a middle book of the series. So it's to be expected. But uh, yeah, it was really good. I really love this series. I want more people to read it. It's, it's genuinely amazing. I also read By Force Alone by Lobby Tadar. This is the book of the month for the Blades and Bodice Rippers book club. We did a live show on Leanna's channel. I will link that video in here or down there. It'll be linked. You'll find it. But we already had a full conversation about this book, so I don't want to get into it too heavily. But uh, yeah, I, I disliked this. I had to like hate read it. <sighs> And it hurt my feelings, you know, because this was a really anticipated book for me when I first heard about it. I was like, oh my gosh, yes, give me this book. And then I get the book and I was like, there were some choices made here and I don't think they were good choices. In the end, I ended up giving this 1.5 stars because in my rating rubric, like one stars is ugh and two stars is like it had its moments and so this one is like ugh like it almost had some moments so 1.5 stars that's like the perfect star rating for this book the basic idea here is, is a arthurian retelling but uh told as if uh like a, like a gangster movie and i'm saying that particularly because there's just blatant plagiarism from the movie goodfellas like <laughs> they're not even trying to hide it blatant passages like at one point they say all Arthur's life all he ever wanted to be was a gangster which is the opening line of Goodfellas <laughs> and I was like what is happening and overall this really feels kind of like a Joe Abercrombie book but written by Kurt Vonnegut which that sentence sounds cool in theory however I don't think Kurt Vonnegut should ever write something like Abercrombie writes it's the writing style is so, I don't know, to the point, like Kurt Vonnegut's writing, where there's very few adjectives, actually. He just says what's happening in an orderly fashion, and you can conclude whatever emotions you want out of that. This is very typical Kurt Vonnegut, 
But for me, I don't want, I want to have emotions in my book. There's literally no adjectives unless you're describing the scenery. And it's like, who are these characters? Talk about them. How did they feel? <laughs> like, don't just tell me what they're doing. Yo, he stood on a rock. How did he feel about the rock? Why is he standing on the rock? Just tell me something. So, um, yeah, I know maybe, maybe lit thick people are gonna be upset with me that I'm not a Kurt Vonnegut fan, but I've read Kurt Vonnegut and it's just the writing style I do not enjoy in general. So I'm sorry, it doesn't work for me. The writing in this was like so much, I was struggle bus. I could not get through this. I had to like psych myself up every day to get through it. I had to read a palate cleanser book every other day. <laughs> Couldn't read this book straight through. Like I read some of it one day and then I read uh, Breath of Fire as my palate cleanser book for a day. And then I came back to this one. I just, I traded off. That's the only way I got through this book. I hate Reddit. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I don't, I didn't like it, but um, the cover is cool. So there's that. Last category is books I DNF'd. So disclaimer, neither of the books I DNF'd are bad books necessarily. I just, didn't want to read them. And I'll give you like a brief description why for each of them. I can't really review the books because I did not read them, but I figured, hey, why not? I, I, I DNF'd them. I'll tell you guys why. I ended up DNFing Queen of the Conquered by Case and Calendar. Now, I think this book is being mismarketed on social media because this keeps getting uh, put into YA fantasy categories and it's 110% not a YA fantasy. It's not even published by a YA publisher. It's put out by Orbit. They're an adult fantasy publisher. This is an adult fantasy. So when you go in and it's just like horrendously violent, like decapitations in chapter one and you're just like, this is intense for a YA book and you get real confused, <laughs> you have to start questioning your life decisions. So that's where I started with the book. And uh, the reason why I DNF'd it, it was just that I, I honestly, I don't have the emotional bandwidth available to like deal with this book right now. It's, it's not a bad book. I don't think it's poorly written or anything like that. Like I think it, it would have value in, it's just ugh, 2020 is hard enough. Like I can't deal with this character. I, I just, I don't have it in me. <laughs> Their main character is Sigourney. She is a, a woman, she was like a noble woman born to noble parents and her, her country was conquered by these people. It's basically colonization of Haiti, but in a fantasy world, though it's not Haiti, but that's the idea here we're going for. So they got conquered by this other people and uh, her people have been enslaved. And she herself being a noble woman was not enslaved. In fact, she owns slaves of her own. She owns her own enslaved people. And some of the people have like magical abilities that the conquerors do not allow to exist. So if a enslaved person has magical abilities, they are executed. And Sigourney, uh, I am assuming is supposed to be a complex character. I mean, in real life, this situation did exist. You know, people did own enslaved people of their own people. I use people too many times since then, but you know what I mean. <laughs> that happened in real life. So I get it, but like, Here's the rub. Sigourney has lit, like no ability to feel empathy for other people. Like she is just, she like is just fully complicit in this slave culture that has become her life and her this island. She, she owns her own slaves and she is completely complicit in this. She's not doing anything to change it or make these lives of the people better. She's literally doing nothing because her life is fine. She has no reason to help anybody else. So she's already kind of a piece of shit. And like, like she just keeps doing bad things. She's executed people in like the first couple chapters of the book, violently executed people. And she's also like, is taking one of her slaves as like a bed partner, which even she thinks is fucked up, which it is. And, and she has this a magical ability that she can read and control other people's minds. So she can literally get in people's minds and feel their feelings and see their life and control their bodies. And yet she still has no empathy for others. <laughs> Her magical ability is literal empathy. 
thing and she still has none and like I just I couldn't deal with the emotional commitment of getting to know this character <laughs> because I'm like oh gosh this is, this is too much to unravel for 2020 it's hard enough like this is too much emotional baggage to dig through so I mean yes that is like some fertile ground for some interesting character study this is basically a very despicable character we're supposed to be following, and I'm like, why should we be rooting for this character? They're not even likable at all. I mean, there's like a lot of evil characters who are unlikable, but they have to be fascinating at least to want to be read about. And I didn't find her fascinating. I found her just to be emotionally exhausting. <laughs> so I DNF'd. But do I think it's a bad book? No, I think it's actually, it has potential to be very good. I think it was well written. It's just, I, I don't have the emotional capacity to deal with this right now. I just don't. So I gave up, okay? I might try again in the future. Just right now, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I also DNF'd Goddess in the Machine uh, by Laura Beth Johnson. And I read about the first 100 pages of it. So that's like a good chunk. It's about a third of the book and I just DNF'd it because I was I was just kind of bored with it um I mean it's got an interesting concept it's definitely a YA story this is by a YA publisher it's a YA story no no confusion there but uh as a grown-ass adult it was too YA for me I couldn't get into it I, I just I, I was trying really hard but I, I found it difficult to get invested in the story so I don't necessarily think it's bad. I think it's just something I wasn't into. Um, I would recommend it for younger audiences and actual teens. I think they might get into this a lot more. I feel like if I was younger, I might like it more. It's just right now, I'm just uh, like, uh, <laughs> I just didn't really care that much. I'm sorry. It's just the world didn't really fascinate me. Uh, I tried. I just, it wasn't catching my attention enough to like want to read it and then I had all these books that I went rogue on my TBR list just calling my name so I was like see you later I'm gonna read something else <laughs> so I just I wasn't gonna put up with it it just wasn't capturing my attention so I moved on all right so that concludes smutty September it was fun pretty much I read some you know different books that weren't romance but I think the vast majority of the books I read this month were romances and I had fun with it you know smutty September it's, it's a month-long holiday I've invented every year. <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below. Have you read any of these books? And if so, do you like them? Do you hate them? Or, uh, I don't know, whatever you want to say. Say hello. How was your smutty September? I don't know. Whatever you want to talk about, comments are open down below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you want to see more videos, make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye!